Charles Vane Tempest Stewart, 7th Marquess of London Charles Stuart Henry Vane Tempest Stuart, 7th Marquess of London Dury, 13 May 1878, 10 February 1949, styled Lord Stuart until 1884, and Viscount Castlereagh between 1884 and 1915, was a British peer and politician. He is best remembered for his tenure as Secretary of State for Air in the 1930s and for his attempts to reach an understanding with Nazi Germany. In 1935, he was removed from the Air Ministry but retained in the Cabinet as Lord Privy Seal and Leader of the House of Lords. His main record at the Air Ministry included He preserved the core of the RAF at a time when even this was under threat from the Treasury. He encouraged the planning of vital new fighter aircraft such as the Hurricane and Spitfire. It was under his tutelage that radar was developed for use by the RAF. The Staff College at Cranwell was opened in the last months of his time as Air Minister. Bannister. But, in underestimating the Luftwaffe, he was badly astray over the issue of German air strength in 1934-5. Background and Education the eldest son of the sixth Marquess of Londonderry and Lady Theresa Susie Helen, daughter of the 19th Earl of Shrewsbury, he was educated at Eton College and at the Royal Military College, Sandhurst. His father's family were of partial East Donegal Ulster Scots descent. Early career On 22 May 1895, after passing out from Sandhurst, he was commissioned into the Royal Horse Guards as a second lieutenant on 8 September 1897. He was promoted lieutenant on 30 August 1899 and appointed adjutant on 9 May 1900. In early 1901 he was appointed by King Edward Roman VII in August 1903. Following the King's visit to Ireland, he was appointed a member fourth class present-day lieutenant of the Royal Victorian Order, his father being honored with the Knight Grand Cross of the Order at the same time. He resigned his position of adjutant in the Royal Horse Guards on 24 March 1904 and was promoted to captain on 6 April. Castle Reed was subsequently pressed by his parents to stand for election to the House of Commons at the 1906 general election for Maidstone. He retained his army commission, but was placed on the half-pay list from January 1910. His relatively unsuccessful career on the depleted Unionist backbenches was broken by a return to the British Army during the First World War. First World War As Captain Castle Reed MP, he traveled to northern France in the first weeks of the war and reached Paris on 29 August 1914, having been gazetted ADC to General William Pulteney the previous day. Although a staff officer, Castle Reeg immediately saw plenty of fighting and believed he had shot and killed one of the enemy on 2 September 1914. In the following months of 1914, Castle Reeg extensively witnessed the destruction of war and the terrible suffering of the British wounded. He was promoted to the temporary rank of major in his old regiment on 1 November and to the substantive rank on the 7th. Hitherto reluctant to involve himself, like his father in Irish politics, the war prompted him to take up the cause of recruitment in Ireland. With his father's death in February 1915, he ceased to be MP for Maidstone and inherited the Londonderry title and the immense wealth and status that went with it. His exalted position helped his political career, not least in Ireland, which later brought him favorable attention by the British government. In 1915, Lord Londonderry, as he had now become a lel, was mentioned in dispatches and rejoined his regiment, the Royal Horse Guards the Blues. He saw in 1915 for the first time the horrific effects of gas attack upon human beings when visiting soldiers gassed at the First Battle of Ypres. In 1916 Londonderry was appointed second in command of the Blues, part of the 8th Cavalry Brigade. He served at the front during the Battle of the Somme, Witnessing the mass slaughter firsthand, his closest friend, Lieutenant Colonel Harold Brassey, best man at his wedding in 1899, was killed. 
He was an acting lieutenant colonel from 15 December 1916 to 20 January 1917. In 1917, Londonderry took command of a composite battalion drawn from the 8th Cavalry Brigade, with the brevet rank of LT Colonel and the Royal Horse Guards the Blues took part in the mast-mounted cavalry attacks on Manchi le Priux on the morning of 11 April 1917, during the Battle of Arras. Manchi le Priux was one of the keys to the northern end of the Hindenburg Line. While reconnoitring the enemy near Manchi the GOC 8th Cavalry Brigade, Brigadier General Charles Volkelly Johnson was shot in the face, he fell with a piercing shriek, the 30th British general to be killed in action or to die of wounds on the Western Front. This put Brevet LT Colonel Londonderry temporarily in command of the 8th Cavalry Brigade during their charge in the Battle of Arras. At Manchi 600 cavalrymen were casualties and many more horses died. The animals were tethered in the open, as their riders took cover, attempts to take them to the rear during a box barrage only increased the casualties. For Londonderry, the experiences of war and the carnage of his brother officers and the family and school friends he grew up with would, as Professor Kershaw commented, leave an indelible mark on him. After serving in the Irish Convention of 1917-18, Lord Londonderry served on the short-lived Viceroy's Advisory Council meeting at Dublin Castle in the autumn of 1918. Promoted to Brevet Lieutenant Colonel on 7 November 1918, he retired from the Army on 10 September 1919 as a Major and Brevet Lieutenant Colonel. On 13 August 1920, he was appointed Honorary Colonel of the 55th Medium Brigade, Royal Garrison Artillery in the Territorial Army, the successor unit to his father's 2nd Seaham Durham Artillery Volunteers. He continued in that role until World War Roman II, after it had been converted into the 63rd Northumbrian Anti-Aircraft Regiment, Royal Artillery and Anti-Aircraft Command. Interwar Period Fall from Grace Under attack from anti-Nazis inside and outside Westminster, Lord Londonderry attempted to explain his position by publishing Ourselves and Germany in March 1938. Then, after the Munich Agreement, in October 1938, Londonderry wrote in a letter that he was aware that Hitler was gradually getting back to the theories which he evolved in prison when working on Main Camp. Londonderry's work was openly antisemitic, declaring, I have no great affection for the Jews. It is possible to trace their participation in most of the international disturbances which have created so much havoc in different countries. After playing a marginal role in the resignation of Neville Chamberlain as Prime Minister in 1940, he failed to win any favor from the new Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, his second cousin, who thought little of his talents. With talk of his possible internment, Londonderry retreated to Mount Stuart, where he produced Wings of Destiny 1943, a relatively short memoir that was considerably censured by some of his former colleagues, and where, following a series of strokes, he died in 1949. On the mantelpiece of his smoking room, at Mount Stuart, Londonderry retained a memento of his diplomatic demarche, an alleged porcelain figurine of an SS Bonnetridger SS flag bearer. A gift from Reichmarschall Hermann Goring, a product of forced labor from the Dachau concentration camp, was neither destroyed nor removed at the outbreak of war. Lord Londonderry served as Lord Lieutenant of County Down between 1915 and 1949 and of County Durham between 1928 and 1949 and was Chancellor of the University of Durham and Bindingham. He was mayor of Durham during the year of George V.I. Coronation, 1937. He was sworn of the Irish Privy Council in 1918, of the Privy Council of Northern Ireland in 1921, and of the Imperial Privy Council in 1925, and appointed a Knight of the Garter in 1919. Family On 28 November 1899, Lord Londonderry married the Honourable Edith Helen Chaplin, eldest daughter of Henry Chaplin, first Viscount Chaplin, 
and Lady Florence Sutherland, Levesson Gower herself a daughter of the third Duke of Sutherland, at St. Peter's Church, Eaton Square, and had issue. Lady Maureen Helen Vane Tempest, Stuart, 1900-1942, who married in 1920 the Honorable Oliver Stanley, and had issue. I. Michael Charles Stanley, 1921-1990, who married Aileen Fortune Constance Hugh Smith and had two sons, and in the and Roman II Catherine Edith Helen Stanley, DCVO, 1923-2004, lady-in-waiting to Queen Elizabeth Roman II from 1955 to 2002, and who married Sir John Dugdale, KCVO, 1923-1994, and had two daughters and two sons. Edward Charles Stuart Robert Bain Tempest Stuart, 8th Marquess of Londonderry, 1902-1955, Lady Margaret Frances and Bain Tempest Stuart, 1910-1966, who married in 1934 Div. 1939 Frederick Allen Irving Munts, and in 1952 Div. 1958 as his third wife, Hugh Falkus, 1917-1996. Lady Helen Maglona Vane Tempest, Stuart, 1911-1986, who married, firstly, of three marriages, in 1935, Edward Jessel, second Baron Jessel, and had issue. I. Honorable Timothy Edward Jessel, 1935-1969, who married twice and had issue. Roman II Honorable Camilla Edith Mary Elizabeth Jessel B. 1940, who was married and has issue, and Roman III Honorable Joanna Margaret Jessel 1945 minus 1980, who was married and had issue, Lady Mary Elizabeth Vane Tempest Stewart 1921 2009, who married in 1940, Div 1958, Derek William Charles Keppel, Viscount Berry 1911 1968 eldest son of Walter Keppel, ninth Earl of Albemarle, and had issue. I Lady Elizabeth Mary Keppel, 1941-2014, who married in 1962, Div. Alastair Michael Hyde Villiers, 1939-2005, and has issue, and in 1980, Div. 1988, Merlin Hanbury Tracy, 7th Baron Sudeli, and... Roman II Lady Rose Dairder Margaret Capel B. 1943, who married Peter Lathrop Lauritsen, son of George F. Lauritsen, of River Forest, Illinois, USA, founder of a food manufacturing, processing, and export firm, and has issue. Lord Londonderry had an illegitimate daughter with actress Fanny Ward, named Dora of Mabel Louise B. 1900. She first married in 1918, a nephew of mining magnate Barney Barnato, Captain Jack Barnato, who died of pneumonia shortly after their wedding. Her second husband, whom she married in 1922, was Terence Plunkett, sixth Baron Plunkett, and with him she had three sons, Patrick Plunkett, seventh Baron Plunkett, Robin Plunkett, eighth Baron Plunkett, and the Hanshaw Plunkett. Lord and Lady Plunkett were killed in an aircraft crash in California, in 1938. Having suffered a stroke after a gliding accident a few years after the end of the war, Lord Londonderry died on 10 February 1949 at Mount Stewart, County Down, aged 70.